And I have some metrics that hopefully will guide you to the right decision for noise mitigation in our area. Um, Ministry of Transport has published guidelines on maximum levels of uh, transport uh, noise. Those are approximately 50 and 55 decibel for day and night. Uh, my community is facing those uh, about 15 to 20 decibels higher. Um, and that's just from the <coughs> operations point of view. Uh, since uh, September, we have been facing onslaught of construction. And uh, in October, um, some of this construction registered 100 decibel. Uh, for those who are not familiar, this is approximately jet engine outside of your window. Um, during that time, I have received uh, calls and emails from my residents. Uh, for example, father who uh, had his children screaming in fright, and he didn't know what to tell them because we did not receive any notification of the construction. Another father told me that his son called 911 because he thought that the train hit his house because we also had extremely high levels of vibrations of, of our house associated with that construction. I would like to ask what uh, exactly are you ready to do based on these metrics and these levels of noise uh, for my community. Thank you. Simply enough. Um, can you just remind me exactly what part of the network do you live with? You, with? Uh, so between Jarvis and Parliament, yeah. just north yeah. of the uh, yeah. train tracks. So, so, so I think Greg, Greg talked about um, the broad principles about that. So I'll, I'll give the mic to Greg as well. Just like to say, you know, thank you for thank you for sharing that. I mean, we, I understand. In the night when teams work. It's noisy. There, there are, there are sometimes lights can be directed at houses. Um, there are things we can do better, um, and there are things we are focusing on. And Greg will talk you through that. There are more things we can do, working with communities to make sure notification is there. And then I think it's useful that Peter talk about what we're doing with regard to standards. And you, you may have picked up earlier, or when we. I'm not sure whether you were in the room when we started off and we talked about what we're going to do with regard to um, publishing more clearly what the noise wall and investment in noise walls are and what um, environmental regulations govern that and how the levels of noise gets interpreted in, in, into the decision-making process. Your question though is a really important one. And I'd like Greg to talk a little bit about what we're doing operationally to, to make sure that impact is lessened. I would like to also point, point that uh, the construction is going on between Monday and Friday on work night, so we, don't, we are not getting any sleep. And uh, I have spoken with seasoned uh, um, industry, uh, uh, transportation industry uh, professionals, and they told me that noise walls are the cheapest thing to build. Thank you. Uh, Sabina, thank you for the question. The um, Union Station is, is, is the hub of our system, as, as you may know. Um, some 94% of our customers travel to Union Station either by bus or by train. Um, we continuously upgrade the corridor so that uh, we can safely handle more trains and therefore more passengers. Uh, and so there will be continuous noise in some parts of the Union Station rail corridor. What we need to do a better job of is advising your neighborhood uh, when we're going to do that. And, and we need to give you notice of that type of work. Unfortunately, that type of work is, uh, is complex. Uh, it involves heavy construction machinery, and trains are part of that to bring in supplies and so forth. Um, that's really hard to avoid. but but. If we tell you in advance what we're doing, better yet, even if we can tell you a month in advance what we plan to do, then, then you can at least adjust to that a little bit. Um, and what I've committed to do, and, and I'd be joined by my colleague Peter Zook, is we'll come to uh, uh, a meeting in January to, to walk through in, in some detail what we're doing and, and why we're doing it. So we'd be happy to do that.